All right, I'm cleaning out the car. <coughs> Excuse me. Cleaning out the car a bit, organizing it. Uh, basically getting it ready for it to be in storage for a while. Um, an opportunity has arisen since I got back to Toronto. And I think I'm going to take it. And if I take it, I might not be back for a month and a half to two months. So I'm prepping the car for storage in the sense that it might just sit around in the driveway for a while. Um, um, the plan was always to leave it in Toronto while I go to Vancouver, but that was only going to be for three weeks. Now that it could be twice as long or even longer, um, if my friends use the car or it just sits there, I'm just getting the car ready to for either case and that there's like no food in there for rodents to get and everything's just uh organized really so yeah but i this this opportunity really excited about it but i can't say can't talk about it yet but really excited about it so yeah <laughs> I feel like I just left home to go on a trip, but it wasn't even my home. It was my friend's parents' house. But I am so excited for what I think is going to come up. I haven't booked the flights yet. I haven't, haven't booked it yet. I haven't committed to it. But I'm incredibly excited for, for what I think will happen. And I'm, I think it'll happen. I'm so excited. Um, but I, I have a few days in Toronto before that happens, uh, see some friends, uh, take care of some things, and then I fly to Vancouver, some time, time in Vancouver, see some friends, time at home, see my, see my dad, and then, uh, and then the excitement happens. And I, I already can't wait for it. I'm, I'm just smiling, thinking about it. Back in Toronto, here we are. Here we go again. On to the next adventure. I'm in Vancouver, uh, right there is the place I used to go for sushi every, every Friday night while I was in university doing my undergrad and it's, uh, it's still there, it's probably still doing well, probably still getting tons of students having food there. Um, yeah, it's just after midnight, slept on the plane quite a bit. so. Hopefully that doesn't mess up my uh, body clock, but uh, in Vancouver for a few days, see some friends and kind of just hang out for a bit. I don't really have too much in the city that I want to see or do, um, but I'm here, so I'll just kind of hang out for a bit. And I mean, it is supposed to be a bit of more of a relaxing, relaxing trip, so. I'm gonna do my best to not rush around and be everywhere. So I basically decided to spend my time checking out architecture projects around the city that I hadn't seen before, stuff that had been built since I'd left. Good morning from Vancouver. Uh, got up this morning and saw the mountains out of the window. I forgot how big and majestic they are. Um, when I lived here like five years ago, I got used to hiking them and so they never seemed that tall. A 
found a plaque here at the north end of the Broad Street Bridge, and at the bottom there it says Design Engineers Associated Engineering. And interestingly, I actually uh, worked on this project. So that's kind of cool. spent the whole afternoon in Starbucks but it was really productive because I uh, resolved a lot of issues with my travel but now I'm just uh, coming down to the waterfront to get the sunset or the twilight really I'm checking out uh, UBC this morning, going to go to the Museum of Anthropology, which is a place I've always wanted to go, even when I was a student here, but never made it to. It was always like, oh, I'm going to go, and then a friend would be like, oh, wait for me, wait for me. So I never made it there. Here's an interesting thing. This used to be the bus loop, and now they've built uh, these giant, probably student housing on top. But to the side is the pool that was built first, and it's completely overshadowed by these big buildings. Yeah, that's kind of unfortunate. Like, what was the back side of the pool building that doesn't have much to it is now, like, the main pedestrian path beside the bus loop. And that's kind of, uh, kind of sucks, because it's a completely disjointed project. private space that kind of really sucks but it's not public and it's not a circulation corridor over the bus loop that would have been a lot cooler this is what i kind of came to see brock commons it's an 18-story clt mass timber building the thing with mass timber is you have to protect the wood so you basically have to cover it all up so even though it's mass timber you can you can't actually really tell that it is from the outside or the inside there's another nice looking building over here. Uh, I'm getting distracted by it. I'm gonna go check it out. It appears to be the School of Theology and the Indige Indigenous Studies program. Uh, it's quite a nice building because it has the wood, but also the large, um, the roof span, the large cantilevered roof. And then uh, Vancouver as a whole is moving towards an architecture of boxes, which I Especially in the fa in, especially in the single-family homes, which I really don't like. Um, but when when there's deep overhangs and and uh, long long glue lamp columns and beams, that I think is is a really really good east west, or sorry, really good west coast architecture. But yeah, that's the school of theology apparently. probably should have come yesterday because I think there was a ceremony for the Indigenous Reconciliation Day. But this, uh, this building is one I've been wanting to check out for a few years since it got finished. Um, it's the Indigenous building between the two libraries at UBC. And I think it's, it's got some quite nice um, motifs to it. One of the big things is this channel, which is um, which allows rainwater to fall down and um, collect into the pool. And that's a representation of, I think, the pain and suffering of the residential schools. This used to be just an empty grass pit between the two libraries, and now it's, uh, now it's a really nice landscape, actually. Uh, I like that they, uh, they landscaped it in terraces of the ground without concrete seats in between. And then that the if there are benches, they're stone and wood. 
It's really nice. That's really well done. Unfortunately, there's no entrance to the lower levels of the library, which I understand why, because you kind of want everyone to enter and exit through the main circulation, but it would be nice if you could connect the two libraries underground or through, through this lowered area. Inside is this really nice uh, basket weave detail for the walls. If you're ever at UBC, you have to come to the Echo Stone. Uh, if you stand in the middle of this little garden, on, on top of the brass plate, you can hear your own echo. It's uh, super cool. At the north end of campus is the Chan Center, which is one of my favorite uh, projects on campus. It's by Bing Tom. It's got a really nice interior. And then just beside it is the Rose Garden, which has fantastic, oops, almost tripped, has fantastic views. I'm making a detour stop to check out uh, UCLL. This is uh, actually where I used to study for the last two years of my undergrad. Um, the building was always unlocked and there was never anyone in it. And so you could just take over a whole, a whole classroom. Um, looks like there's banquet seating set up in it, but they used to be classrooms and you could just just take over the whole classroom and have it to yourself for the whole day, pretty much every day. It was, it was one of the best places to study because there was no one around. You had the whole place to yourself. And it was right beside this really nice garden. So whenever you looked out the window, you saw, saw something nice and calming. finally making it to the Museum of Anthropology, uh, but that's alright, not on any schedule, so it's just across the street. Nations West Coast art is my favorite style and uh, really enjoyed that museum. The building itself is also fantastically beautiful. I really like Arthur Erickson's work and this is uh, no different. Um, there's a lot of beautiful moments with soft indirect lighting uh, on the inside and the outside and uh, yeah really great place. Um, now it's uh, 
well past lunch and I think I need to get something to eat. I was going to I was gonna hang around the university and, and do some more travel planning, but I think I might get lunch and take it to a library in Surrey, Surrey Central, and work there because I have a dinner in Surrey tonight. And so that, that would make it one trip and a bit more convenient. So that's the plan. Something that uh, I used to take for granted and I really appreciate is being back among the cedar trees. Uh, the West Coast coniferous, coniferous trees are beautiful and I forgot how much I missed them. Um, Vancouver has a terrible policy of, of putting urban trees that are uh, deciduous. So you get a lot of leafy trees in the urban parts and like that, that border the streets, but you come out to B UBC and there's uh, tons of, tons of uh, tall cedars. And it's really nice to be among those trees again. Um, of course, a lot of the streets at UBC also have these stupid coniferous trees. Um, but you know, at least there's some cedars. Behind me is the Naitobi Gardens. I, it's a Japanese garden and I used to come here every day in my first year to hang out between classes uh, in the afternoon. And it's fantastic, really beautiful place. Um, yeah, fond memories of it. The Surrey Public Library closed at 5, so then I had to go to SFU for another hour. The next day, I went to Granville Island with a friend and checked out the new park at Smythe and Richardson downtown. as well as Brentwood Town Center. And then I went to Lonsdale Quay to see the new shipyards development and because you can never have too many sunsets in BC, they're always the best. off to Vancouver Island to visit my dad for a few weeks. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe to help grow the channel.